Hiding engaged. Power engaged. <coughs> Dying <coughs> engaged. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, isn't it nice to have a Bolt Reaver Asilos? Our monsters give us so much, their cuteness, their out of combat abilities, and as their rider, I feel obligated to try and give them what they want too the souls of their enemies, at least in Bolt Reaver's case. I wanted to make him as strong as I could, and yes, you could go with a sort of cookie cutter thunder build, but here I thought I'd have a little fun with skills and find another way to achieve some significant strength. Bolt Reaver Asilos is naturally a strong crit monster, so let's get critical, critical. I'm, I'm 24 and that reference is significantly older than me. Nobody's going to get that. What am I doing? Crits. A focus on crits led me to the vigilance gene. Then connected me over to the heroics gene and well put simply what we have here is an incredible pve build y you could use this in pvp i guess but it it it's definitely not built for that unless you're a psychic and it sort of hinges on one main strategy winning head-to-heads in pve you can always win a head-to-head -head if you know the monster that you are fighting like if you understand what they are and what they're going to do and you can never die from winning a head-to-head -head. you can be knocked down to one health precisely but never killed when you win so in theory could a monster not live forever on exactly one health taking full advantage of skills based around low health as long as you get head-to-heads right yes Yes, they can. And what's more, you can use that to make you crit more often. And well, when you're critting with heroics active, let's just say you can get a lot of good stuff done. All right, so what kind of spice do I got going in this cumin then? Uh, that, that's his name, short, of course, for cumulonimbus. For the genes then is where you get to watch it all come together. Take note at this point, by the way, that cumin is level 62. For reference to what the numbers that you're seeing in all the footage of combat today are, this isn't some level 99 monster going on a rampage, it's just cumin. Now that you are seeing the board here though, yeah, I know it looks like a bit of a mess, but trust me, don't judge a book by its cover. The only bingos that we have are two thunders, but the reason for that is the sheer collection of power the rest of gives us, just through sheer skills. Now, it's time to tell you that there is a sad part of this build. Most of the animations sort of suck, because we sort of get rid of two out of the three default genes that Bolt Reaver has. We lose the awesome as hell black hole, we lose the awesome as hell thunderhorn, all of your attack animations will be wing slaps, and you will like it! The one gene that we keep though is Thunderclad XL for Azure Voltage, moderately increasing thunder attack and defense for five turns as well as charging up power for two turns. Thankfully, keeping this lets us make him glow blue, which is the main thing that I really need to keep around. What actually makes this build tick though is everything surrounding this one whopping power up. Literally surrounding though as I put it in the middle. Well, I mean, the universe put it in the middle, I just found it there as an egg. We already talked about the main shenanigans of this build being staying alive at low health. The main damaging component of that is Heroics XL, which seriously boosts your attack under 50% HP. With that, we paired Vigilance XL, which seriously boosts crit rate under 50% HP. And we also stuck in an attack from Base Asilos, the last stand XL gene for Vengeful Thunder, a heavy thunder damage single target technical attack that does far more damage when you are at low health and also has a chance to inflict paralysis. Adding on to our crit chance dreams, we have the Critical Eye XL gene, which seriously increases crit rate, and then the Critical gene from Emerald Nargakuga for the sneak ability, slightly raising your evasion and crit rate for five turns. I know it says slightly increases, but don't underestimate this one. This gene is a bit of a hidden gem for crit-based builds. Then finally on the crit train, we have the Onslaught Large gene from Ivory Legiacris for Plasma Pressure, a medium thunder damage single target power attack with a fairly high chance for a critical hit. The Zenogre gene L from, you guessed it, Shrek. No, it's an ogre, you ding dong. This gives us the attack Thunder Fist, a heavy thunder damage single target speed attack with medium chance to inflict paralysis. Then finally, to round it all out, a good old Thunder Boost XL. What's the game plan here then? And how does this actually work in the field? Well, you may notice that we have one reasonably low cost speed attack, one reasonably low cost power attack, and one reasonably low cost technical attack, all of which are quite strong, allowing us to counter any attack that's thrown at us in a head to head scenario. We have tons of stuff that makes us stronger, under 50% health, and as long as you can always win your head-to-head, -head, you can survive on that health forever. We have created a situation where that is now possible. 
However, the monster won't always target your monster, and on these turns you have two separate five turn buffs that you can apply. Always do sneak first if you are doing them both back to back. Don't waste the turn after a zero voltage on anything but an attack. That is your highest damage potential turn. If your monster is not being targeted by an attack, and you have both of your buffs active, use Vengeful Thunder if you are low health, as it does the most damage in that situation. Or Plasma Pressure if you are not low health, as the crit chance on top of the rest of the build's crit chance makes it extremely consistently strong. You may be watching the footage and saying, why are you using the kinship skill at full kinship gauge? Honestly, I'm pretty convinced that Vengeful Thunder at low health added onto the damage of the rider doing that turn is just more damage than Bolt Reaver's kinship skill does in the same amount of time. Not to mention that using your kinship skill, of course, dumps all of your kinship gauge, meaning that you could be left unable to counter an attack on the following turn and ruin the whole point of this build sitting on low health forever and surviving, because it won't survive. Outside of the monster itself, then, what can you really do to affect this to make it stronger? There are a handful of things that you can do to support this powerhouse of a situation. One, don't bring an NPC buddy with you. You may think I keep talking about winning head-to-heads because it keeps you alive, but it also generates a buttload of kinship to win a head-to-head. -head. But Buddies being with you means that your monster won't be targeted as often, and it also means that they won't be under 50% health as quickly. On that note, you can actually do something a bit cheeky. I never really thought about it until building this specific monster this specific way, but obviously you don't have to heal to full health between fights in PvE, so you can either leave them down all the way at 1 health, or just sneakily boost them right up to about 45% health using herbs and the like, so you walk into the next fight already ready to go on turn 1, no damage intake required. The main thing that makes this build work as well as it does is the ability to just adjust to whatever attack your opponent throws out. However, that is tied to kinship. A good way to increase your kinship generation is, of course, the prayer pot, which you can feed a token of mounting to generate kinship way quicker. You can also use the soul kinship skill on your rider to boost the kinship that you generate yourself, as well as the kinship that you generate from petting your monster if you feel so inclined. And I also heavily recommend carrying around one hunting horn in this build, if not two. Two? Let me explain myself. Bolt Reaver Hunting Horn is thematic, but really anyone with the tuned set of songs will do, first of all. Kinship Generation Up is great, Crit Rate Up is perfect for this build specifically, and Charge Ahead is wonderful always. If you at least keep the Crit Rate song up, then you can really achieve a lot with this. Now, you may notice that there is one potential glaring issue with this build as a whole, right? Non-targeted enemy attacks. If it targets my monster that I am keeping on low health consistently, they die. Well, the answer to that is knowledge, or at least an instinct that something like that is about to happen. In that moment, you either heal your monster to full health, letting the incoming blow knock them back under 50% HP, or you whip out your second hunting horn with the music song set, so you can play the evasion riff to make both you and your monster dodge both one attack guaranteed. Hence why I said maybe even two hunting horns. But there you have it, a creature of death and destruction built to survive at one health point, critting away for incredible chunks of damage while incredibly difficult to kill himself. My personal Bolt Reaver Asilos build. Feel free to mess with it however you want for your own purposes, of course. The world's your oyster, the ducks are free. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye